See you were a fan of my trivia, a real big winner. No guessing, such a whiz. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my quiz? So let me get right to Q1. Ba ba. Let's get down to the nitty gritty HQTs. Hey, big winner! Ba 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 ba. Win. A little cash with me. Ba, 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 me ba, ba. That's right, kids. It's fun, laughs, good time. Fun, laughs, good time. Fun, laughs, good time. Tonight on HQsical, the musical, the live trivia game show, where you answer questions to win cashical. Welcome in and bienvenue. Welcome, meine Damen und Herren, mesdames, messieurs, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, bonsoir, good evening. Ich bin ein your conferencier. Je suis votre compère. I am your host, the Joel Gray of Trivia, Scott Rogaske. Getting to quiz you, getting to quiz all of you, including the cast and crew of the other Josh Cohen Talk About a Good Show. It's fantastic. Go see it. And shout out to our very own James Rubin, named to Forbes' list of 30 under 30. 
in the category of glass blowing. It's something he does on the side. Didn't know about it, but I guess he's really good at it. Congrats, James. It's Broadway or the highway on tonight's show. I'm asking 12 questions that defy gravity, but will they defy savagery? If you answer them all correctly, you're getting something even better than a Tony Award. Money, baby, $5,000. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by Providence, impoverished, in squalor, grow up to split $5,000? That's what I was getting to. Having an extra life is going to help you do that. And an eraser. Those are our new phone power-ups there. I mean, of course, they're on your phone. Playing a group of at least two other HQDs to earn that eraser, which erases an incorrect answer. Yeah, tap that eraser button and voila, you got a 50-50 shot at the question. Both erasers and extra lives can only be used once per game, not in the final question. You can buy an extra life, but erasers, they're priceless. You just earn them for free. Play with your friends. Get your friends to get their phones out right now. Maybe use them tonight. Maybe, just maybe save them for tomorrow's big game. I won't tell you how to live your life. Do what you want. But I will tell you tomorrow is going to be dope. We're going to the Wizarding World. Yeah, giving out $50,000, a chance to win a private advanced screening party of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, for you and all your friends, and a chance to appear on HQ Reading, Cumero Numero Uno. That's right. we got a lot of submissions so far on our Twitter. Who's going to win? Take a picture of yourself. Reading question one, we put it out on our Twitter, HQ Trivia, earlier this week. Send that video in. Most likes and retweets will get aired tomorrow night before Q1. So that's tomorrow. 50 grand, the party, all that good stuff. There's a scavenger hunt happening on Twitter. Yeah, it's not too late to join the Harry Potter fun. But it is getting late tonight. Tonight, there's only HQ tonight. Do you feel quizzy? Oh, so quizzy. Do you feel quizzy and witty and bright? Let's find out. Let's get down to the aforementioned nitty-gritty and get this funny thing that happened on the way to the forum. On the road at Cumero, numero uno, with 370,000 people live. What is the main setting for the musical Les Miserables? Outer space, New York City subway tunnels, or France? Do you hear the people quiz? Quizzing a quiz of ancient quizzes. That's from Les Quiz. Les Quizarables, my own musical, but... Les Mis introduced many a high school cast to torch songs about sad lives and was said in France during a French Revolution, not the French Revolution. Common misunderstanding there. 344,675 of you are going to a castle on Q2 for Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors famously features a singing what? Online shopping cart, debit cart, or plant. Little Shop, Little Shop of Horrors, Little Shop, Little Shop of Horrors. There's a lot going on downtown where the folks are broke. Specifically, a savage singing plant. Do I? You don't know what you're messing with. Uh, you got no idea. <laughs> you don't know what you're looking at when you're looking here. Audrey, too. She requires human blood to survive. He or she. We don't know the gender. 313,106 are saying, suddenly, Q3 more. But the rest of you are down on Skid Row. It's like lots of great show. Q3. What musical featuring Sharks and Jets had a bilingual Broadway revival in 2009? West Side Story, Avenue Q, or EV Top? I'm sorry, Doctor. This modern telling of Romeo and Juliet with music by Leonard Bernstein received an even more modern reboot in 2009 with Stephen Sondheim collabing with Lin-Manuel Miranda, yes, to write Spanish versions of his classic tunes in West Side Story. Hoy me siento tan hermosa. 266,087 of you sitting pretty tonight, tonight for Q4. Those are the only two songs I remember. Which of these band's catalogs have been used for a Broadway musical? Coldplay, Matchbox 20, or Green Day? You're a jet. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. I remember that one. Matchbox 20 is four times the band Maroon 5 will ever be. Let me just get that on the record. I don't want to be an American idiot. Remember that song on that album that became a Broadway musical for one glorious year before closing on April 24th, 2011? It starred former Spring Awakening star John Gallagher Jr. And it was based on the music of Green Day. I don't want to be an American idiot. I don't want a nation under the new media. 
my man Johnny Gallagher, JGJ, in the title role there, in 188,323. Did he play the American Idiot? Was he the idiot? I don't know. I didn't see it. We're coming around to Q5, but the rest of your basket cases. Which musical features the choreography of Bob Fosse? Chicago, Fiddler on the Roof, or The King and I? I should say John Gallagher Jr. in H Cutie. He's probably playing right now up there in Toronto on set for his next film, which will be great because they're all great. Ten Col Cloverfield Place, great. Short Term 12, great. That that's movie night. This is musical night. Bob Fosse was so iconic there was an entire Broadway production called Fosse, showcasing his fancy footwork and love of hats. Jerome Robbins no slouch, though. His repertoire can be found in West Side Story, Gypsy, Fiddler, The King and I, but Chicago, that's a Bob Fosse joint. Let's see those jazz hands. Jazz hands. Bob Fosse, Chicago. Chicago, 148,178, getting jazzed up for Q6, Stockton, to Malone. A Change in Me is a song written specifically for the stage version of which Disney musical? Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, or The Little Mermaid? Yes, this was an unusual move. This song was actually written four years into the Broadway show's run specifically for Tony Braxton, who is set to take over the role of Belle in Beauty and the Beast. No! Tony Braxton would only join the cast if they wrote a new song just for her. Hashtag diva. 71,888. H Cuties going beast mode. You like that? For a Q7, Hair was the Broadway debut of which iconic actress? Goldie Hawn, Meryl Streep, or Diane Keaton? Tale as old as time. Well, this tale is as old as 50 years ago. Because 50 years ago is when Hair debuted on Broadway, changing Broadway forever before she was looking for Mr. Goodbar, before she was Annie Hall, she was part of the tribe in the original Broadway, Broadway cast of this love rock musical, but Diane Keaton did not bear all. In the famous number where everybody disrobes, disgusting. Groucho Marx thought it was disgusting. And now, and now look at it, it's, it was iconoclastic. 24,088, putting like Diane Keaton and getting a savage question correct. You survived. Survivor. You, soul survivor. Been down so long in the midnight sea. 24,088 of you. Diane Keaton. You're flowing it. You're showing it. Q8. I'm showing you Q8. Which of these is not one of the ways to measure a year according to rent? Strife, deep sleeps, or inches? How do you measure? Measure a year? How about love? Well, that's not. How about in daylights, in sunsets, in sunsets, in midnights, in cups of coffee, in inches, in miles, in laughter, in stars? How about it? No deep sleeps, however. Pull up the lyric sheets, Command F, search deep sleeps, you will not find it. 18,740 of you. Well, it's taken far less than 525,600 minutes to get to Q9. But here we are. Which musical features a chorus of Laker Girls? Spamalot, Legally Blonde, or Rock of Ages? Laker Girls. This is a clever, clever pun. I, like, I appreciate puns. Clever gag in Spamalot. Here's how we did it in the Laker Girls is a line from Legally Blonde. But that's just one girl, the hairdresser. Hardly a chorus. In Spamalot, Laker girls are credited on the official cast recording and everything. They're literally girls from the lake. Remember Lady of the Lake and her Laker girls? 7,563. Spamming Q10 right now. Complete this quote from the original Oliver musical. Please, sir. What? Give me some more. May I have some more or I want some more? Please, sir. Oliver. Oliver. Poor little Oliver Twist just wanted some more gruel. And maybe he would have gotten it if he'd been a tad more polite. He does say please, please, sir, but he doesn't ask. He simply demands. Please, sir, I want some more. What? 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 I want some more. I want some more. Catch him. 
Snatch him! I want some more! Is that how you talk to us? Us, we terrible people? 3,030, yeah, you can talk like that, Oliver. I'm on your side on this one. You can say I want some more. They treat you like garbage. 3,038 surviving this one. We lost 6,000 plus here, but 3,038, you're two questions away. Three questions, well, two questions away. Consider yourself at home at Q11, the playwright behind Ragtime. Also wrote the book to which musical? Kinky Boots, The Full Monty, or The Color Purple? Mm -mm, Ragtime. These are all about shows I have not seen. Terrence McNally is a notable and extremely versatile playwright, writing not only the book for Ragtime's Nostalgia Trip, which premiered on Broadway in 1998 with a $110 million budget, but also for the steelworkers turned strippers, that tale, that classic story told in The Full Monty. The Full Monty, Terrence McNally doing it both. 1,208 of you with the range of Terrence McNally covering 11 questions correctly, but there's one more. You're knocking on heaven's door. It's Q12, and it all boils down to this for the $5,000 prize. 1,208, feeling great, but not totally satisfied. There's one more question, then you really feel great. And it's about our favorites. We asked about in the last question, last time we did Broadway, we're doing it again. Q12, which Hamilton song features Lin-Manuel Miranda doing impression of Ja Rule? Helpless, nonstop, or Alexander Hamilton? And yes, in the time since our last Broadway show, I still haven't seen Hamilton. Still haven't seen, by the time I see Hamilton, the role of Aaron Burr will be played by Lil Xan. This one's for the true ham heads out there. The Lin-Man confirmed on Twitter that while paying homage to great musical theater minds and rappers alike, throughout his hit show, he does include a growly impression of Ja Rule on the 10th track of the soundtrack. It's helpless. 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 And 866, if you got it right, you're not helpless, baby. Baby, girl, put it on, man. Take your bows, ladies and gentlemen. 866 of you winning $5.77 or 78 cents. That's better than the bouquet of flowers they give you usually after a show. Those, those die quickly. This is money that you can spend on food. Forget flowers, food. MPO4 Boyv, Stephen Viso, CP1122, Eric Smith, Mitch McConnell, the cat, Repco86, back in the winter circle. I remember Repco. Schumanta, MRW. So many more of you, congratulations. And before you go to Twitter right now and tweet at me, at Scott Rogowski, and say, uh, you said soundtrack. It's a Broadway show. Broadway, there are soundtracks. They're cast recordings. All right. I already self-corrected. So sue me. But for the rest of you don't care. Hey, thank you for playing. I like you. You want to come see me again tomorrow? You can, 9 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern Time. Been hyping it up all week. You already know what it is. You know what it is. It's Harry Potter trivia. Fantastic Beasts trivia. Newt Scamander. Give me the Newt. Give me the Newt. Give me the Newt. Give me the Newt. Oh, you're getting it. We're giving it to you. $50,000. Do not miss it for the Wizarding World. Wizarding World trivia. $50,000 a chance to take over a theater. There's a scavenger hunt happening on our Twitter account, Manana. And a real life scavenger hunt for real cash in New York City. Yeah, look out for that. Until we meet again, I shall remain your host, Scott Rogowski, signing off, saying, Forget the Quickie Mart. Goodbye to Quickie Mart. Who needs the Quickie Mart? I do.